Uh, hey everyone, uh, welcome back to another episode of Aleph Zero Podcast. I'm your host, Mateusz Raczyński, and I'm excited to introduce Łukasz Pleva from Darkverse and Juan Rivera Perez of Rev to discuss some of the trends shaping web-free gaming right now. So let's start with you, Juan, if you could give us a quick introduction of yourself and, you know, the project you're working on. Yeah, of course. Uh, I wish I had more time uh, than a, a little bit. I, I think if you're working in Web3 gaming today, it just seems like you have 10 different jobs, which is exactly what I have. I started uh, in gaming about three years ago with my own Axie Infinity Guild. Within that guild was just learning a lot more about, you know, what does it really mean to be a Web3 game? What is the fundamentals of what this industry is going to be moving forward and how is it going to be different in a traditional gaming space? Uh, I then used that experience to raise $700,000 for a Netmarble FNC subsidiary guild, which we then were able to grow that guild to about 200 scholars. We also invested in a variety of different games and we're just kind of like in the front line of, you know, what's going to happen to this industry because everybody wanted to start a guild, but no one knew you know, what it was actually going to be like to produce, you know, actual revenues and be sustainable uh, alongside just even knowing where Web3 games were going to go. I then, uh, after that position and doing a lot of BD work there and getting connected to some major players, I moved as head of partnerships uh, at ReNFT, uh, which was a really great experience. ReNFT Re being one of the leading rental infrastructures for Web3 games and just in general Web3 projects. Uh, you know, as I was, you know, within that position, I was able to get connected to all the top blockchains, VCs, games, creators, service providers, you name it. And it was great to just kind of build up my BD, you know, role and network as well. So that as I was now transitioning out of that role, uh, now have a really great network within Web3 Gaming with I would say really kind of the entire space. I like to say that I'm probably the most over leveraged guy in terms of my network in Web3 Gaming. And I'm, I'm really excited for the future of what's to come and, and more importantly, uh, creating sustainable businesses within Web3 Gaming. I'm currently a co-founder of Rev, which is helping games understand their influencer marketing on a deeper level and also giving the tools needed for creators to really foster a genuine community rather than just you know giveaways on socials and have a true understanding of who their community is and, and what they identify with both in a behavioral sense and in a, an analytical sense yeah that's great to hear you definitely have a, a good overview of what's happening in the game for space and of course it's the next big thing in in crypto so yeah, we can also move on to Lukasz. Uh, of course, we had you on the uh, one of the episodes of Other Zero Podcast. But if you could give us also a brief uh, overview of you know the project you're working on and and your involvement there. Okay, so once again, I'm uh, Lukasz. Actually, I'm the like a head of blockchain and economy into a project called Darkverse. Um, we are building um, double A RPG game on uh, Aleph Zero blockchain um, using the Unreal 5. This will be like story driven like adventure with uh, combat based on shooting and uh, and melee fights and all things set up in some like dystopian beasts traveling around the space so yeah mostly this is actually what what we are building now yeah we're, we're really looking forward to you know seeing the first location of darkverse when is that coming actually hopefully it will be end of the first quarter 2024 i'm saying hopefully because you know that in the game space actually development is also something like a, a bit of spice of unknown um and we're dealing here with the web3 gaming which uh, is not only like a game development but also blockchain and regulators which which actually thinks that uh, traditional gaming doesn't deal with so actually now in we are in, in some uh, moment that we are you know tidying all together and this is why i say hopefully because actually we are going into this direction but i'm not sure it can be exactly i can give exact date let's say yeah like with other types of you know software development uh, you can always encounter something that you know postpones the date and it's completely normal but yeah fingers crossed for the q1 or you know asap basically yeah, but, you know, let, let's move on to what we want to discuss today. And, of course, the GameFi term was first coined around, I think, 2020. And it was like the intersection between 
gaming and DeFi, as of course blockchain enables completely new in-game economies. So what are the trends that you see happening in this space right now? And maybe, you know, we can also cover here where, how we got here, where we are, what's the history here? So I know who wants to start. Juan, maybe? Yeah, j- just so I can uh, make sure that I heard correctly, uh, you're looking for current trends and in, in history? I, sorry, it lagged a little bit there. Yeah, like where where we are, where we're heading, and you know uh, where we came from in, in this space. Yeah, I would love to, to kind of kick it off. So I'm someone that's a lot more kind of fundamentally based on, again, kind of creating sustainable business within really any blockchain market. I mean, you look at in the past, you have PFP collections that their entire business was minting and then trying to figure out how to create a product to ultimately create enough secondary volume to be able to fund you know future projects uh, i think now obviously with gaming this has taken a, a huge shift and we're seeing that shift have to happen in real life today um i i like to start off that web3 gaming although obviously at the intersection of blockchain and, and gaming i don't necessarily think it actually started within crypto I think that the trend started mainly because of the amount of honestly hurt that game developers were having in the general gaming market. You have an increase of privacy within Apple. You have an increase in uh, obviously, you know, taking a cut of their 30% and, and a variety of other different things that indie game developers at a point were just like, I feel like, or I feel like they felt like they were locked out of a market and they were looking for alternatives to push towards creating sustainable revenue. And so I think we saw that really major shift. I think honestly, starting, you know, around the same time that, you know, crypto gaming started becoming popular with Axie Infinity, which is really ultimately what kicked it off, right? We saw Axie Infinity and then we saw a whole bunch of clones of Axie Infinity. And I think with that start and and obviously with the start of also Yield Guilds, uh, which, you know, Yield Guild Games being the biggest one, uh, kind of being there for the raise and then even being a guild of, a guild of myself saying, wow, there's a lot of money in this. You know, we saw a lot of investment. Um, but what, one of the things that Lucas mentioned is people didn't realize how long it took to create a game. That, you know, a game development is very much so a, a long-term play. And so I think that, you know, it's it's very difficult to just pinpoint kind of where we're at today because I think that we're in a variety of different stages now in the gaming space. It's not just a one-line narrative of saying Web3 games are this. I think now it's turning into gaming is this, Web3 is this. How do we mix this together to create something that could potentially work? And it's been really interesting to see Zynga, you know, with Sugartown approach this in a very degen way. But it's also very interesting to see other things like ZBD come in and say, hey, we can actually give rewards like uh, Satoshi rewards, BTC rewards to everybody that will hopefully increase the retention rate for casual games, hyper casual games, and ideally have those players reinvest more into the economy. So there's just so many different things that if you look at the space right now, it's just so interesting. And I think we're at least right now with the little recent like pump that we saw in the market, you know, I don't think that prices necessarily reflect the development that we've done, because I still think that we are a while's away from launching more and more games. Traditionally, in the gaming space, you don't see game developers saying, hey, I have an alpha, like, hey, I have a beta, like, come try it out. And I think we're, we're finally getting to a spot where we're returning to the fundamentals of what gamers want. But more importantly, we're experimenting with the innovations that crypto brings, which is the thing that I'm most excited about. And, and I'm really looking forward to how people continue to experiment. And I think that in the next six to eight months, we're going to see so many of the you know, versions of that that will ultimately cause, you know, price action to increase. But I am personally very much so just focused on, you know, what is the thing that's actually helping core base functions like the game industry always wanted to improve user retention, lifetime value, you, you know, user acquisition. Can we make it so that we can actually make user acquisition much cheaper in Web3 than Web2? Because if we can do that, then it's game over. Everybody's going to go to Web3. It doesn't make sense to stay in Web2 because you're paying more for a user. And so, you know, I have really great conversations with people that are at uh, wallet infrastructures, obviously data analytics being at Rev, blockchains, distribution, publishers that are all working on the same exact thing, which is improving those base, base functions. And that's the thing that I'm most excited about. And I think that the mo- the thing that most people are focused on, but obviously there's always going to be those who are just kind of focused on, hey, let's launch a token. Hey, let's launch an NFT you know, collection. I-, I think those will always be there. 
because you know the the technology is not gated to just a specific amount of people but that doesn't mean that someone's just going to launch something and and people are going to be like wow this this works like we can actually do this i i mean we recently saw with yuga i, I personally met people that were making two hundred thousand dollars with their hv you know kind of rental process like you know, that might be something that works for you know traditionally what are known to be whales are we now seeing a new user base coming in which i have heard in the in the trenches dolphins like are dolphins now a part of the gaming space where it's a, a user that has more money than the general you know gamer but less money than a whale so everything's popping up right now it's very exciting and, and like i said i spend 24 7 on it so hopefully everything can be finished by next year because i have uh spent the last three years of my life on it i mean but i would love to spend the next three years of my life because again i think gaming is going to be the start of a domino effect spilling over to our social uh, economy uh, which is ultimately where i want to see gaming go um, we see it already with free to play with when how doom started you now have you know monetization within your cars of like hey you want heated seats pay extra per month uh, the same thing will happen within gaming that will spill over to social and and that's the thing that i'm personally more excited about my one of my personal goals is to run for president here in, in the states and I want to run off of like blockchain tech. And, you know, that's kind of why I'm really diving into gaming, but I'll, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> yes, that's definitely the future here. Uh, anything from your perspective here to add, Lukas? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, Juan said like so many things actually, and this is now I feel like this is going uh, really could be like a amazing conversation, even out of the record, you know, like when we can actually go jump from the topic to topic. But yeah, I see actually few things and then they're also um, like going so many different directions. Like so actually just maybe to start from something, you know, like uh, you mentioned first the uh, PFP. So actually now those collections, which was launched in the first wave, they actually, they, I mean, some of them, which like still exist, some of them they would survive and don't lose the, uh, their communities. They now looking for jumping into uh, another uh, um, another story so like they want to look for utility because they have communities something which is super valuable so they want to actually uh, jump into like say this gaming bandwagon and you know like uh, help uh, bring the users because they bought nft and they, they want to actually also um, you know, find something useful for the pictures. So this is kind of like transition is happening over time. And also I need to admit because, uh, yeah, Juan said about Axie and actually on the beginning, I was really not appreciate enough such games like Axie because this was like, you know, simple mechanic, casual games. And I was expecting something as gamer, which will be like, you know, much more advanced and like, you know, like, uh, uh, technologically and so on but my perspective change i really now appreciate what uh, such casual and hyper casual games are doing for the market because they have like the highest range they are easy to install everyone need can you know use it with their mobile phone uh, you don't need like pc with us rtx uh, cards so actually this is something which uh, like it's the first introduction first step for actually like uh, web3 games and then actually people can go forward. So when it comes to trends, like I maybe will actually mention something which is uh, close to what we are doing. So I see actually that guilds and at the same time uh, DAOs are actually kind of like driver for changes because they actually combine people. And I think that the community is something which is getting a number one in all this uh, like uh, Web3 playground. It's getting more and more important. So there is no community, there is no token sale. Yeah, um, when, when, when you are like starting the project uh, based on token. And this community is no, I mean, the people are much more aware of the value they bring to the table. So I think this shift is happening. So um, like if you are uh, thinking about traditional gaming, the spread of uh, the income is like totally mostly to investors. Then they are builders with some like kind of like maybe 20, 30 percent. And then like. Um, users are almost nothing when it comes. They're just paying and this is it, yeah? So uh, I think that this is the, this uh, shift. This uh, uh, It's coming that uh, people are aware of their position and they will demand that projects should share with them and build a mechanism that allow them to, to also also uh, like not only ng the game but also earn something. This is like uh, connected with, uh, you know, this... Uh, 
ownership, but ownership is not only like owning and I will able to sell, but I can also inside my community, I can share what I own or I can rent what I own. And this is something, you know, I can still keep. And then the DAOs or guilds, they can combine such assets and, and you know, work with them. Players also much more aware of the, uh, not only on ownership, the data, but I mean, not only ownership, the, the assets, but also data. So this is something also I think will come that uh, people would like to jump into Web3 games because this can be much more clear what's happening there. And they are actually tired of this actually, not only developers, because... As Juan said, the developers are tired of the um, paying 30% fee to uh, like the marketplaces and they're looking for the new place because acquisition also prices grow of the users. Um, the fee is really high. So, um, But also players are tired of this. So this is actually, I think that this is the chances for the Web3 in, in general. Yeah, and uh, maybe one more thing when it comes to our project, actually, it's the changing from like play to earn to play and earn i mean that like you know because majority of games can't provide like ink i mean like anything like called stable income for everyone so when you like introduce pvp mechanics esport you can reward uh, many players but this will depend on their uh, skill and this is not like for of course casual games but more like games like we're making that uh, they are skill based and then for some uh, people they can actually earn some money by playing this is kind of like side money let's say and thanks to the ownership later when they quit uh, playing game they will jump into different product they can of course uh, monetize their time by by selling the items or, or or the avatars yeah so like i think this is the most shift for me it's not like technological but like in the people like let's say knowledge and the perception of of uh, what they can do and what they demand from the games so the web3 will give them uh, some other option much better um much more fair so yeah i actually think it builds on some needs that were all already there right because for example with i don't know world of warcraft or other games you actually had people selling items you know that was illegal but they were they just did it so you know in web3 maybe that's just more like regulated transparent and you can you can just do it it's just part of the game it was part of the those games right so so yeah but you also mentioned you know the role of DAOs and the guilds in the in development of of such web free games so what would you say is you know what's the what can be the influence of such a DAO on on the development of the game you know as as i said i mean you know the like uh, for example, like now we are actually coming to again bull market slowly. Um, we don't know like uh, wh- where it will go, but uh, when it comes to like rising your uh, like rising your token and actually um, make it useful, like build the utility for the players, like you need to distribute it quite widely. I mean, like people should have access to this token everywhere they can. If actually. Like you want to gather a huge uh, community in your game and also uh, you want uh, people to be able to trade your items and, and so on. Yeah, I mean, like if it's available uh, easily, then actually uh, more people will jump and they will grow value for everyone. This is like, I think the also exchanges, they don't care about your tech. They care about your community because you bring them also more users. Yeah, this uh, exchange or any marketplace will allow uh, buy you, I mean, buy things from your game and people will be in your game. Then your users also will jump into the other projects and, and this will spread. So I think that DAOs, which are sitting now on around $20 billion and they are much more aware of their position, they will be uh, driving this uh, like movement between uh, games and the exchanges, exchanges and marketplaces, and like in the whole ecosystem. They also, um, thanks to their ability of voting and uh, like uh, will participate with, with their money, they can drive the UGC. So such DAO or guild can, you know, um, first of all participate in some kind of achievement program. So they can send the players to the game, like their users, if it's a DAO outside of the game project. Uh, so like uh, go there and do this and then like kind of gamifying the, the experience of being the member of DAO. And also when it comes to voting, for example, we want to introduce such feature for uh, inside uh, our game that uh, people who will own the token, they will be able to vote for the game direction. So when we will allow, I mean, 
like to to people to choose uh some like of story things um when it comes to some uh, aesthetics when we will introduce new levels of our game then players could vote and decide actually what they will play on the end in some part i want to give like a quick hot take and i think that like DAOs are not going to survive at all i'm a part of a whole bunch of DAOs, and most of the time it just turns into three people that are like yeah we'll just do all the work you know it's just easier. I don't think that that's to say that it's not going to be an idea that will really push the gaming space forward. Like in WoW, you, you have guilds and those guilds is specifically in um, in EVE Online, you have people actually, like it's a whole voting governance that is focused specifically on DAO-like features. I think that is really bullish. But when it comes to like external parties, it's just really difficult. Like I said, it's, you know, people almost are not incentivized to unless there's money, which the same thing with play to earn is not sustainable. You're, you're talking about DAOs in general, right? And all the external bigger bigger ones. For now, yeah. But I do agree that like guilds right now are really popping off. We're seeing a lot. Guilds are turning more of like into a publisher and distributor rather than like an actual DAO at this point. So it's just, it's really interesting to see how they've like pivoted and trying to survive because I mean, they, <laughs> they need money. Everybody needs money. Yeah. And actually, I, I was thinking, what's the state uh, of adoption of Web3 gaming as you would see it now? I, I know, Juan, you are more focused on, on Latam probably as well. So, you know, do you see anything specific there in this market when it comes to adoption? Yeah. Um, in Latam specifically, we're seeing Venezuela being a very, very, very similar lookalike audience to Philippines, to India, which then makes Web3 games developers wanting to approach those regions you know obviously trying to get adoption i mean honestly like you see figures like in ronin with 100 daily active users with pixels you see figures with a variety of other different games which looks amazing but i don't necessarily see that translated over to like community on twitter let's say which i don't think that that's an amazing stat to put into account that's like twitter activity to like you know daily active users but I would say that, like, I, I really dislike the word, you know, Web3 gamers, because someone who signs up with a custodial wallet might not be considered a Web3 gamer. You know, it, it's just like because you don't have any like Web3 data analytics for them. Uh, there's a variety of different companies that I personally have talked to that their sole mission is to create a Web3 lookalike audience in Web2 to onboard them into specific games. So... I think we're honestly at this point where like people in the space are really excited personally as like honestly investors, but we haven't even approached the, the space. I mean, it's weird. You approach things differently. So you either approach yourself as a web two, web three game, or you approach yourself as a totally native web three game. And those two things look very different. Ideally, the thesis around approaching yourself as a web three game is that your, your TVL per user is going to be much higher and your retention per user is going to be much higher. Do I think that that's been proven yet? No. Do I think that we've proven that we can pitch Web 2 games as Web 3 games? No. So it's kind of difficult to say that, like, you know, where, where we're at. But, but what I can say is that we're so much deeper in development that these games are actually looks fun to play. And that's the thing that everybody has been saying for the last two years is, like, we got to make it fun to play. We got to make it fun to play. And, I mean, I, I don't want to throw shade to anybody, but there's teams building out there that have been building for the last two years release an alpha and i'm like this looks bad like it doesn't look good and it's not to say that they're a bad team it's just that they need more time and that's what we've always been saying is that we need more time we need more time usually game developers take two to three to five years depending on the game that they're building to pay, build a good game they need millions of dollars to invest to build a good game and so that's why i think we're in this like really weird spot where I mean, personally, for me, I'm connected to a, a variety of indie game developers who are sustaining themselves out of just having an NFT collection and having a really tight knit community. I think that the, the wave of indie game developers is going to increase like crazy. And more importantly, the wave of community games is going to be increasing. You see Telegram games, Discord games, AI generated games are going to be popping up. And so I'm bullish for everything because there's so many different genres in gaming, as we all know. And all every single genre is almost taking its own its own what's the word like its own description or idea of what web3 gaming or web2 web3 gaming looks like and and it's really really interesting and again exciting but we're still long long ways away as you can see i'm a little bit more of like a realist where it's like i'm just gonna say how it is and i mean 
I love to give like a, a cute picture for everybody, but I want to make sure that we're building sustainably because right now we saw a pump and people started launching tokens and NFTs and it's like, cool, but like, where's the product at? Uh, is this product going to compete with what is already out in the market? Because Web3 games is not a, is not a category on its own, although technically it is. It's competing against every other game, regardless if you, you know, if you turn Pokemon into a Web3 game Pokemon, like, is it going to be Pokemon? Like, probably not. We're, we're finding ourselves in a weird in-between, but very exciting because we actually have some things figured out now compared to when we were doing it in the X Infinity days. Yeah, I think we are starting with smaller market that is like focusing on, on Web3 people because it's like they are they have the attention there already but then the game is still you know just having better games thanks to blockchain right probably not all of them i don't know if the next gta will be on chain gta 7 probably or what but yeah well like to that point like we saw xrp win and xrp win then is now i've seen some pretty like great things that say that roblox might be building on top of xrp because xrp is not a security so it's like we're so much of almost everything is like pointing towards gaming regardless if it's like web3 gaming it's utilizing web3 does that make roblox a web3 game no but like that's what i'm saying from like the web2 web3 game stance is like it's just using mechanics that will increase their lifetime value of their users will increase their retention their acquisition much easier I mean, I talk to my cousins every single day. They're like, can you buy me this skin? Like no one else outside of like kids are really asking that, in my opinion, and obviously like hardcore gamers. And so I think as we see time evolve, maybe it takes 10 years for Web3 games to like completely just overtake the market, just like free to play took 10 years to overtake the pay to play market, you know, but I think that alongside we're going to be building companies like Rovio and we're going to see games like Angry Birds that are just going to be like, yo, like there's something here. Like, let's look into this deeper. Now mobile games are, you know, number one in the market for, you know, obviously like devices, generating revenue. Do they have the, the highest lifetime value? No, but they have, you know, the highest retention value, the lowest acquisition costs. So yeah, it's difficult to say like where they are already, but we're definitely getting there. But I think you can say the same thing for free to play games. You can say the same thing for play to play games is everybody's always just improving and increasing, you know, the way that they are able to actually build their business. At the end of the day, people just want to build better businesses. And I think that Web3 gaming is a way to do that for Web3 is the best way to do that for gaming. Yeah, this is a good take here. Like free to play and you know or pay to win games as, as people might call them they were really introduced like 10 years ago and they they took the market by storm so definitely this just might be or probably is another shift like that yeah but going back to you know to to how people are perceiving that and you know what, what's the adoption there do you see any other you know take in europe Lukash? I don't think that Europe is much more uh, different than the players which uh, Juan is working with. I will maybe start fr from the from the actually indie games because I was even uh, advising the Aleph Zero team when it comes to some uh, indie companies which trying to jump into crypto, and this is uh, the shift will uh, obviously will happen because not only the revenue is taken from them by Steam and other platforms, but also I mean how many games are coming into the market and how hard is to acquire the user so there are like hundreds uh, thousands of games which coming and i'm not talking even about the bad games which are like bad, with bad game design but even good games uh, with uh, nice graphics with nice mechanics they have problem to uh, just uh, you know go through this whole bunch of uh, games coming out so the uh, jumping into web3 games this is also opportunity to be in some like fresh market which is like not so many quality competitors it's still uh, like rising it's new so um, it's uh, much easier with quality product to stand out. So this is actually this uh, marketing reason can be one of the, the things that will uh, first, first teams will jump into. And I think this also in Europe because I was talking with the European teams um, and we also have such same, I mean, approach. We, uh, with our game, we want to first reach the crypto enthusiasts and people who are into GameFi. We still know that this jump between Web 2 and Web 3 is still ongoing, and we don't know how actually long it will take because the traditional players are usually expecting the game is finished. I mean, not so many players jumping into early stage, downloading and or paying even for game which is like under development, and they are not like to, you know, be in this community of. 
feedbacking and, and so on and so on. And then definitely also onboarding of the Web3 games should become easier, yeah? Because we are talking about like non-custodial wallets, the whole process is still hard. And in my opinion, it will jump. I mean, pe- people, traditional gamers will jump into Web3 when will become like almost invisible. And so this actually experience should be similar to MMORPG or other multiplayer game, yeah, where you're only opening account and you can start playing if it's free to play or like uh, you need to pay some subscription when it comes to games like uh, Final Fantasy or, or, or World of Warcraft. And when it comes to difference between one or Europe, I think the difference is between uh, Asia and uh, Western Europe and uh, US because, and this is something I two times hear from uh, one of the Animoca uh, founders, uh, Yatsu actually, who was comparing that how different approach to capitalism actually makes the people, I mean, adoption of NFT is different when it comes to uh, gaming. So um, people, all people playing casual games, like definitely from from every uh, part of the society and then like in asia that most of the countries where capitalism is quite new and they recently in the recent generation become rich they are much more open for everything that allows them to make money and they're like you know they're not thinking about the negatives anything you know they are just uh, they are negatives they are positives like everywhere but they are thinking positively about nft and web3 gaming and any like innovation which actually driving the the money behind it and uh in the um, western societies all the polls saying that young adults are negatively seeing the um kind of like innovations driving capitalism because they even don't see how behind is fair or how what gives them the opportunity they seeing some you know like highlights from media that someone like make a lots of money on pictures that uh, someone become a, like a billionaire someone bought like lamborghini and uh, later price fall down they they actually are not like people who are not into this industry they actually based on highlights and i think this mental change need to happen in in the western societies to adapt the web3 yeah because people who are enthusiasts they already know but this whole bunch of people actually, I think like Poland is a good example because we are like in Europe, but we, we actually also um, recently actually become richer. So I think that like when it comes to Central European America, Asia and like our country and like the Central uh, Eastern Europe, uh, we will adapt it much faster than Western communities. Yeah, this is just the difference, let's say. Yeah, it could be, I think, because maybe this is also something to play for, you know, for the rising markets or emerging markets and then, you know, the established markets. So probably this is, you know, we are just more open to innovation and then... And open regulators, yeah, this is actually also that, uh, yeah, the old money not protecting their own position. (laughs) This is actually also, I think, important, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but also, I was wondering, what do you guys think is the the relationship be- between AA or AAA gaming and GameFi? Can we actually see it as an you know enhancement of the the big titles, or would you say that you know this should go another route probably to then become maybe those big games? So, for example, Web3 is probably a tool to the gaming world. So I don't know, you know, this is probably looking into the future a bit but do you have anything to you know comment on where will be the triple a games and where will be the game five side of things or will it be just one thing five years from now to go first i think that we'll see the merge of those two at the end of the day it's just gaming right like it's not web three games it's just it's just games if we had more money i think that we can build a triple a game i don't think that like after what happened for the last you know, bear market and run, like there's not a lot of, I talked to a lot of investors. They're still not investing even after the recent pump, like they're more interested, but they're not deploying capital yet. And so, um, you know, I recently talked to a team, you know, yesterday that was like, Hey, we want, we don't have the idea. We don't have the MVP. We want to do like a a raise, but we want to ideally raise $8 million to build our game. And it's like, it's very difficult to give a team like that money because they haven't built before. And that's the bad thing about web three is that it brought in so many non game builders to build games. But more importantly, we're getting more and more game developers who are actually game developers who have built games in the in the past build those games that I think 
can reach AAA quality. I think, I mean, I ask myself, like, what does the AAA quality even mean? Like, is, does it just mean that it's really popular? Because if that's the case, then, you know, I do think that'll take much more time. I obviously understand, like, the, the qualities and stuff, but like like GTA 6, I think, is one of, like, the most hyped games that will spark absolute interest in the world for just gaming in general. Like, that is something that I would consider a AAA game, but look how long it took to build. <laughs> like, you know, it's almost like it's, I'm not going to say it's been the whole, like, the entire crypto market time frame but it's almost similar to when you know bitcoin launched some like a couple of years off and so yeah it's difficult but I, I do think that we can get mass adoption today i don't know if you're both familiar with like nfl rivals nfl rivals uh recently crossed two million daily active users um i think it also crossed about like three three million revenues and um, within those revenues uh, i think that they're getting at least 15 percent of that from the secondary sales transactions so like that in itself for me is one of the big things that is like, hey, we're, we're, we've got it already, but it's like now we have to figure out how to like just bring in more gamers to these games. And I mean, I don't know if you've ever signed up for NFL Rivals, but the process is so seamless. The process of buying an NFT doesn't even feel like you're buying an NFT. I actually had to go in and be like, yo, is this actually an NFT? Because <laughs> if I if I bought it, I don't, I don't really want it if it's not an NFT. Um, so I think we're I think we're there in that sense. I think more people should be using tech like that. I mean, uh, specifically the team behind uh nfl rivals is mythical labs uh building on the mythos chain like that is a very specific like uh, tech you use case that they've built out just for their own games so it's not necessarily like given to everybody but then we have people like obviously imx uh, now beam uh treasure all building in a way to get people to a place like that but i'm personally most bullish on just like web games to start off with because everybody can try it out and then obviously like mobile games but as we all know, mobile game development is very difficult. Um, Limit Break yesterday just announced that they're going full mobile game. So, I mean, you know, I think that there's a lot. Uh, yeah, there's a lot happening right now. I think it'll ultimately merge into just kind of gaming in general. And um, unfortunately, and I say this, I don't want people to be onboarded through Web2 games and then just stay there. I want to see their on-chain analytics and that's more of like a, a personal thing. Like I want to see how they're interacting on chain so that I, so we can build better businesses and, and, you know, use that data to ultimately understand user behavior. But when someone's logging in through like a custodial wallet, like that's not the case. So I'm a really big proponent of having every web two web three game, like essentially have like an exit button that says, hey, exit into your custodial wallet that you have or your non-custodial wallet that you have, your MetaMask wallet, whatever it may be. And and then people can start using, you know, DeFi products. They can start using, you know, this and that. They start using this and that. Uh, but we're definitely not there yet. I think that, which is a dream for me, is about like five years away. But again, we're getting to a spot where AAA is, I guess, coming. This is uh, hard to define this AAA gaming, yeah, because um, who is the, you know, depends on who is the re you consider is representative of the AAA gaming. If you will think about the, like, publishers and uh, a big corps, so for now there is no relationships because like Web3 Gaming is kind of threat to their income, yeah? Because they want to, you know, sell you all those skins and instantly one, one, and you can't sell them back, you can't own them. So this is this diversity of how actually uh, the income is shared. Actually, it's totally broken. So if you think about us, uh, AAA Games representative as developers, I mean, people who are actually builders, that is slowly changing. When I was in a conference in US, I, I talked with the Shrapnel team and they were people from Santa Monica studio uh, which are building you know biggest playstation triple a titles and they said they are just tired of you know instant crunching and you know they just get the salary but all the money goes into the pocket of investors owners um so um uh, like he as they are as builders i uh, don't feel like uh, rewarded enough and even not not even thinking about the users because they get like just game and, and that's it they even digital game which they can resell later um, because this is how it goes uh, recently. So I think the developers uh, actually are like, uh, you know, tired, this like whole big acquisitions, biggest fish buying big fish, like Microsoft acquiring Blizzard and like the developer and builder is getting smaller and smaller. Yeah, And people with huge pockets, they actually uh, like uh, ruling all the stuff. So yeah, I think this uh, fairly sharing this uh, cake between the investors, builders, creators and users will be the crucial and, and actually uh, will drive the developers who work previously 
for uh, AAA games, and they will jump into the Web3 project slowly. Yeah, this is something still uh, it's coming slowly because they are afraid of their uh, CV. You know, they they later like such a AAA company will don't hire them back if they will work for a Web3 game. But this is actually I think slowly we are. I mean, Web3 gaming industry is slowly a threat to these big game companies. And this is why they thinking it's OK, it's not yet, but we should look at them uh, on their hands because they can be big like any time. So they don't want to take a risk because such uh, big businesses building big games takes lots of millions. And this is why they're making remakes of games. This is why they're making another part of famous IP. There's like much less risk involved into big games because uh, you know Excel should be green, yeah. Always like uh, just the next month, next quarter, everything should be always green and, and so on. So uh, I see similar uh, story when it comes to uh, you know influencer marketing, social media. I was there when actually social media skyrocket, and most of people in Poland who were building social media agencies back then were young people. Nobody from such big advertisement companies was into like Facebook, Instagram. This was something. Ah, this is for kids. Yeah, like let's don't do this. And, and actually, in two years. They created sometimes company with 200, 300 employees and actually sell them later for, for like a million bucks actually uh, to these companies when already was too late to start from scratch. So I think the Web3 is such stage that these big companies are actually looking down on us. But there will be moment they will just come with like, you know, big box of dollars and they will say, I we want to buy you. Yeah, this will be actually the moment they will realize how uh, Web3 games can be uh, powerful and driven from from the bottom of of uh, communities. So, yeah. Yeah, it sounds like it. This is also a good comparison here. That's, that's actually social or even even certain social media platforms rise as, you know, things for kids they they are looked down upon but then somehow you just can't resist it so so maybe that that's also that but but also you know with with, with such web free gaming that also is you know deeply involved in the economical side of things or uh, what would you say are you know the risk and challenges of, of the space that we need to solve before we go to you know the next billion users or, or so because you know xc infinity has been hacked for for what like 620 million dollars so yeah that's probably a big a big risk to take so uh yeah juan do you have any any, any on that yeah i mean there definitely is a lot that we need to work on i personally think that we need to work on getting money back that we give users i mean like um there's just so much like in DeFi, you give um, liquidity to people for staking or whatever it may be, and then they're just going to dump on the market. Same thing with like gaming. I think if we can learn how to really empower those gamers to utilize whatever token they are being given to reinvest in the ecosystem, like that would be. I think that that's something that would be huge. And I, I mean, that's well, that's why I'm a really big proponent of um, ZBD. So like what ZBD does is a system built on the lightning network that essentially for gasless and can do it to a custodial wallet if you're playing a hyper casual game you can reward users using bitcoin you you know you fund the wallet you know xyz and then you give them satoshis over time you might be getting paid like 0.001 cent but like over time this might actually incentivize users to you know buy back things in the game I think that that's one of the, the biggest things. Obviously, you have security, you know, issues that I think we should always be focusing on. Anything that's financialized should be should be focused there. But yeah, I mean, like you mentioned it before, you know, being able to just have things be actually, you know, within the market, like can can be, you know, let's say an NFT skin can be sold on OpenSea or can be sold within the game. There's still a lot of infrastructure that is needed to be built, and I think that Avalanche specifically has proven this that like. We need more infra and we need infra for specific use cases. You have their subnets, which are really great for if you're a really big game. But if you're not a really big game, you probably can't afford a subnet. So you want to go on something that like you can afford or that you can ultimately build out yourself um, or with someone, somebody else. So, yeah, there's still a lot of issues. I think the great thing is that we actually have this core group of gamers and, and users that are degens by nature and they are willing to just try things and they're willing to experiment and they're willing to give us more data 
and see how things work. Uh, but that soon has to end. I, I don't think it'll be anytime soon. But I think, you know, to everybody's point, like we need to go out and reach, find a spot where we can reach, you know, the mass, uh, the mass adoption essentially of users to just onboard. Do I think that that mass adoption is just going to go in and automatically buy a whole bunch of NFTs and then become DGENs themselves? Like probably not. But like we see that with already games in Roblox and Fortnite, everybody's looking to buy skins. So yeah, I think these next couple of years, like I mentioned before, are exciting. But yeah, we we have a lot of things to work on security, onboarding still, uh, infrastructure, and at the end of the day, again, I, I think it just ultimately just boils down to time and money. I like to think that if we had gotten 10 times more money in the past at the current market and we had the same amount of time since before, uh, we would be able to launch AAA games you know, tomorrow. Uh, but we're not there yet. And But we will see the rise of indie game devs first just because it's obviously much cheaper to, to build out those games. We can say those things for literally all of crypto. It's not just gaming, but now we're just trying to figure out also things within gaming, which is even more difficult. I think also UX is a large part of, you know, what we need to solve. But I see this trend that, for example, not always you have to have the seed phrase, for example. You can abstract it, you can, you know, have your keys on on iCloud or, or whatever. And, you know, somehow it's, of course, it's less secure, but still you can do that. And, you know, uh, Ukash, any other challenges you see from uh, as a game developer, you know, that, that you'd like to be solved before, you know? Yeah, I mean, you know, when it comes to such, uh, because you mentioned this uh, hack, cyber attack. So, I mean, for me, all cybercrime field, of course, is important, but this is actually something which increase everywhere, not only in web crypto or Web3 field. Yeah, this is actually getting like uh, more and more complicated that more and more groups are involved into this uh, like scams and stuff on so i think there is no like solution for that i mean this is endless war because uh, us uh, like security technology getting better the crime uh, guys getting also better and they finding new way so the way is to just educate people and create dump proof technology which actually you know make people make less mistakes and actually th- this is the thing which works in e-commerce so i think it also works in web3 just we need time and money because this was the years of campaign the years of advertisements and uh, media relations and then people now actually become much uh, more resistible for the actually any any threats um but for me actually as a, a game creator and we are registered in switzerland so this is one of the market which are regulating crypto widely that uh, for me actually kind of challenge and risk is uh, actually how the game companies will use their influence and uh, and also stock exchange with losing money because of crypto and this is like the case of wall street which which also makes the regulation in us crazy <clears throat> they will use their influence to you know regulate the crypto market to you know kind of make money for themselves yeah because they are worried that this actually money is going to our direction and this is for me like kind of a challenge that web3 community in generally crypto industry need to uh, fight back against actually uh, major game companies and also like stock exchanges like on this regulator field yeah to to don't make it like too strict or don't make it like favor the major big companies because i see they trying to you know take a control and set up the market on their way and then actually like everyone will need to eat from their hand and this is actually i'm well, the most worry about when it comes to uh like such regulation driven by uh, like lobby from big uh, companies um, and for me, uh, also something which uh, personally I, I now uh, worrying about is also uh, this like whole legacy we created. I mean, code legacy we creating working with blockchain because like Web3 Gaming is still young. Uh, lots of companies uh, doing uh, Web3 games are doing lots of R&D. And actually, uh, this is, of course, valuable knowledge we're getting, but this is not cheap. And like if you want to deliver quality products, like there will be lots of mistakes happening on our way. And, you know, um, this something uh, put it on blockchain, stay on blockchain, and we later need to deal with it. Yeah, there is smart contract doing something, and then people own something. And actually, if you want to jump, because this is dynamic environment, if you want to jump into the next stage, what to do with this what remain yeah because we should uh, treat them with respect and allow them to you know kind of uh, uh, use what, what what we sell them what we give them uh, before yeah so so this is actually this kind of uh, this technological legacy and how to 
connect it what we are doing now with what we will do in the future this this is, will be i think big challenge also yeah sounds like it but of course you know smart contracts are can be also upgradable and probably you can i think uh you know improve on what you have already and still if you end up with you know you have to release a new game like entirely new game every now and then those retro games are still 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 around right so might be a challenge but might be also a feature <laughs> here uh all right so i think we have a good overview here of you know where we are at what, what we need to solve and you know we are actually all here probably looking you know looking forward to the development in the space so uh, as we wrap up maybe let's just do a roundup what are you looking forward the most to in this space in the next year yeah i can i can start um i think the thing that i'm looking most forward to is outside of like price action because i think price action also always breeds innovation and experimentation uh, we saw that in just previous nft kind of cycles it did it like i think it fostered into something that web3 gaming used but not anything super sustainable but i would say just experimentation there, there's just so much happening and that everything is happening you know, almost like it's people are are trying to fail, which is amazing, and we should be doing that because the faster we can fail, the faster we can learn. The faster we can learn, the faster we can build more sustainable businesses. And yeah, I think you know we're right now is a prime example for exactly that. We're also just like experimenting with narrative. We see things like Prime and Colony and Parallel, all things combined. Of what does it really mean to be a game? Like we're going back to the fundamentals of like a game and a, and a gamer. And, and kind of looking at what that, you know, what that looks like, what's the intersection. And so I'm very excited for this experimentation phase that we're in. And I think we'll continue being in it for a while. And I'm, I'm, I'm relatively sure that we're going to see a lot of success, but I think that we're only going to be seeing that success in the near term future. If we focus on data driven business decisions, if we don't focus on data driven business decisions, I don't think that we can really get anywhere new. So I'm very excited for that pivot. And personally, I've seen it. Um, I'm personally working on it with Rev. It's like, why are you going to give a content creator, uh, you know, ten thousand dollars that you don't know what their audience looks like? You don't know what on chain uh, their audience looks like. You just don't really understand what the value they're going to bring to you, and you also can't really track the value that they bring to a specific smart contract. So, and, and I know a lot of people are experimenting with these features. We've seen a lot more money being invested into data. So that's something that I'm personally excited about. But in general, I think experimentation within the entire industry. Yeah, I agree. I mean, we need like uh, lots of more actually like infrastructure and tools to, you know, like focus on building your product. Because now actually in Web3, uh, much uh, more we are actually trying to, you know, we are building something and it comes out, you need you need actually some tool and you need to build it yourself, this feature. Yeah, you can just like, you know, in the Web2, just scale your business, just click one, one click and you uh, you know, connect with something with something new. So this is actually what uh, what uh, takes time and uh, afford that mo more uh, teams and creators. Uh, I mean, developers should jump into the field and like uh, fill the gap. Yeah, I mean, create such uh, analytics tools, uh, create some some things which allow you to make smarter uh, business intelligence and so on. And I, I actually waiting for uh, the, this new wave of games coming because uh, the first wave of uh, games uh, of crypto games actually uh, was for for me, kind of uh, people from like crypto make the games. They were not game developers, most of them. So now actually this what is in the development or some alpha releases. I'm, I'm like watching how actually like, for example, Star Atlas doing the pivot because they was have ambitious project and trying to build something. But now they realize they should reach the audience by mobile phones with some easy accessible uh, economy and, and mechanics. So I'm waiting for actually uh, this uh, mass, more mass adoption of uh, Web3 games thanks to new quality. And it's both coming to casual and hyper casual games and also to um, more uh, like projects uh, like when they are double or even triple A uh, games. 
And uh, yeah, I can maybe summarize it that uh, maybe we should, you know, hire as Web3 industry, we should hire consultants from, you know, uh, uh, porn industry because they were actually always the innovators. You know, they bring the VHS, DVDs, uh, VR, streaming. They were always first and they actually bring the mass adoption to everything. So maybe we should hire people from there because they definitely know how to actually um, like introduce technology um, uh, with their content. <laughs> I want to quickly add that because I actually made that joke so much when I was like, uh, like starting to learn about the traditional gaming spaces that uh, it said that technology always innovated in two spaces, porn and gaming. And I'm obviously in gaming. So totally agree. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a good, it's a good note. Uh, all right, guys. So I think, uh, yeah, that's all I had for you today. So thank you for joining. Uh, it was a pleasure to discuss the state of GameFi and yeah thanks to you uh and yeah see you in another episodes of other video podcasts so take care bye bye